Hello everybody, Adrian Plus here. Yes, from Adrian. Hello. And this is number 60 in Sounding the Shallows. And here we are again. Here we are again. Amazingly. Yeah. Uh, we we said we would read one or two of our emails uh, this week, and we're going to. Um, one was from somebody who said, I was reading some notes from Philip Yancey yesterday, and he quoted G.K. Chesterton, which is always fine for me. Fine for you, yes. Um, Christianity got, this is the quote, Christianity got over the difficulty of combining furious opposites by keeping them both and keeping them both furious. I think that's wonderful <laughs> and unusual. Yeah, it's going to take some thinking about, actually. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Well, I'm reading the difficulty last bit of again. combining furious combine, opposites. They combine furious opposites by keeping them both and keeping them both furious. That's really worth taking to pieces, which we're not going to. No, uh, but it's certainly not bland. No, no. I know it is really worth looking at. Yeah, yeah, actually, it was the same person who at some other time sent something, which I I think tunes in so much to what we were saying last week about truth and reality needing to be the same thing. And at the moment, reality being very important. Um, somebody, uh, Nadia, no, I'm not going to be able to I think it's this. Nadia Boltz Weber. Well, thank you for that. Something I won't like try that. and say it. Anyway, the quote was that at part of the ordination service for Lutheran pastors, the presiding minister asked the ordinand to vow to care for God's people, bear their burdens, discipline yourself in life and teaching, that you preserve the truth, giving no occasion for false security or illusory hope. I just think and that's in brackets such it says, a good... To them, doesn't it? No illusory hope to them. Yeah. Which is important. Yeah. It's yeah. so important at the moment, isn't it? It is, If yeah. ever there was a time to stand on what we know yeah. and for that to be real and And in a sense, we come, we come back to that in a minute, I think. Yeah, we um, do. Not, not immediately. Your other email... Oh, no, there's another email, but late, in, no, in, in, in a bit we come to that. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, the on. next email is very <laughs> funny, really. It was somebody saying your reference to the plaque, that that was a plaque saying to the glory of God in tiny, tiny letters, and then the name of the person who put the money into the building in huge letters. <laughs> your reference to the plaque put something into my mind that is irrelevant. I like it when this is irrelevant, I but know. amusing. It's great. In Borton on the Water in the Cotswolds, there is a building probably once a school, which has been converted into public toilets. Oh, God. Over the door of the ladies, there is an inscription which reads, Laus Deo, Laus Deo, probably, which means, praise be to God. And the person says, I wonder how many people say that when they get there just in time. <laughs> we know the feeling, so much travelling. So much yearning for toilets. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of toilets still closed because of COVID. I think quite a lot of people would tune into that. Yeah, quite a lot, really. Deo. Yeah. Well, what else about this week? I mean, for some people, it probably is the last thing that they want to think about. But we have loved watching the Olympics, haven't we? Well, I think a lot of people are thinking about it. No, we, we've enjoyed it very much, <laughs> actually. And we've become experts, haven't we? Well, I think funny thing is you watch something you don't know much about and you start making comments one of my sons and I happen to both be up pretty early in the mornings mm. um, and uh, there's been the diving on and and I we find ourselves saying things like, oh you know too much over rotation there too much and, what uh, over rotation oh, you know when they the just over -rotation, yeah they over rotation yeah. and they yes, and you know yes. things like um, oh they're going to empty the pool with that dive and yeah. things we actually know I think Nilch. if they contacted me, I could have helped there. <laughs> and also, one of the things that is surprisingly entertaining that we've been watching is uh, Taekwondo. And what, what is interesting about, about it is that it actually consists of basically watching people kicking each other in the head. Yes, and I know it's a highly skilled, highly, highly detailed and careful sport. Yes. But actually, it's really exciting because... You change position very, very quickly. You can yeah. score points very, very yeah. quickly. Yeah. But it just struck me as, again. <laughs> we were saying things like, "Yes, I think his foot really hit his, his opponent in the head." Then that's good. <laughs> I mean, what, what is becoming of us? Anyway, we we, enjo we enjoyed the exciting. taekwondo very I, much. I, yeah. I suppose I suppose what it made me think is that uh, it's fine, you know. 
talking about something you actually know nothing about and you know feeling quite strongly about it when you're in your own home yeah. but it's not always such a good idea when when you're not maybe well that thought reminded me and i i thought marx actually said this but apparently it was engels who was a marxist who said when the behavior of some people who are marxist didn't seem to him correct said i am not a marxist and uh, i'm i'm sure M uh, marx was also said to have to have said that. And what, what, what was the connection? Well, sometimes uh, comments from people who are not Christians, and I don't mind any comments, but they, they, do, they do bring out the same sort of response mm -hmm. in me. I, mean, if that, I, I tend to think, if that's what you think being a Christian is, then I don't think I am one. Mm -hmm. And I have sometimes wondered if Jesus sometimes says, I'm not sure I am a Christian. Mm. But, but I suppose you only have the confidence, don't you, to say some of these things if you know nothing about it. Maybe. Like we're saying yeah. about the taekwondo or the diving or anything else. You know, if you're, if you're an armchair expert, then you can say things mm. with great confidence. Um, yeah, and, and, and well, they, what, they do. Uh, are some ex what are the examples of that? Because there are a number of them, yeah, aren't there? Yeah, there are. I mean... Um, People say, if for instance, I think imply it's a, it is sort of frightened person's way out. Oh, I think so. Um, a, a, a crutch, people often say, that means we don't have to face the real problems. And I, I would like to add just now that people have a crutch because they have a problem. If I would just point that out, <laughs> yeah. as I well know at present, and I would happily abandon my walking aids if I could. Mm. But I, I, mm. we'll come back to that as well. I don't mm. think I've ever ever been able to happily enjoy my faith as a crutch. No, I mean, there was a phrase, wasn't there? Uh, I don't know who said it, but somebody will probably let us know about religion being the opiate of the people. And, and no. I think that means it just lulls you into some sort of artificial peace. Both of those attitudes are to do with thinking that Christianity means we don't face the hard yeah. facts. A sort we of don't, harmless drug. A sort of harmless thing that yeah. if you want to, you can... You know, ah, oh, that's quite nice. Look at all those old fuddy duddies who that's go right. to church or whatever. And more particularly relevant over the last uh, year, probably year and a bit, this really hard-nosed right-wing rationalisation. Um, and it's not surprising people ass assume uh, that that's what Christianity is about. Because people, people who are in that mould do talk very loudly about what they believe and what they can do and what is right and what is mm, wrong. Mm, mm. And you do hear about some extraordinary excesses in mm. church groups, not just in the obvious place, I might mm. add, but mm. all over the world, mm. um, which can be an excuse for the quite bizarre and... and um, sometimes even cruel behaviour well, uh, to others. I mean, that applies to all faiths, doesn't it? There does seem to be uh, an opportunity, if you're that way minded, to go down that route. You know the one I find perhaps the nearest to people we know who are not Christian? It's a kind of idea that, are we really still going along with this? Is it, is it not a bit childish, a bit silly something yeah. that if you're a thinking person mm. you grow out of yeah. i think that's the nearest i can come to people that we know yes. and the difficulty yeah. is that it's so hard to to talk about it really because well to talking about the way it really is 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 quite a long journey from there and um, but it is true it's 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 people talking as though it's the same as growing out of our belief in Father Christmas, isn't it? Well, and, and, and that comment is made sometimes, I know. isn't and it? Can I just say, though, for those who won't understand at all what I've just said about Father Christmas, mm -hmm. that the evidence uh, for the non-existence of Father Christmas is very scrappy. So uh -huh. you, you don't you don't have to worry about that. So I don't have to worry about no, the no, no, you, Christmas? No, no, no. No, you don't. You okay. Don't, you don't, well, no. that's a relief. But, it, but seriously, even um, intelligent... Um, and well-read, you know, people who do research well and do look at things carefully, they do believe, they know. Um, yeah. I know we sound so moaning, but it, it is true. And I think I think we've mentioned this before, someone who said, um, of course, you Christians don't bother about, are not worried about dying because you go straight into glory or whatever that is. 
Mm. And I quoted the bit that says, Jesus Jesus says, um, my grief in Gethsemane, my grief is so great that it crushes me. Mm. And he said, well, that, that's not in the Bible. Mm. And I, I, I never really, I always said, well, you must, you must have a look. And I never heard back about whether he did or not. But that, that knowledge was wrong. Um, it, mm. I, mm. it troubles me that mm. not not just him. We as well in the past have got us. Well, a and, and I can say that about other faiths, other religions that I know very little about. That I've been quite comfortable in the past in commenting on, yeah. thinking I kind of know yeah, because I've read yeah. an article yeah. or 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 a page in a book yeah. it's so easy if you don't know or understand what makes other people tick and what is important to them to dismiss it isn't it really or to add too much importance to it i think one problem because uh, we've both been thinking about this but is that all no, perhaps not all most all i don't know these kind of distorted perspectives and misunderstandings they are actually things that happen in the church. So it's not just that people are saying, I don't know what happens. <laughs> I don't, I know what happens outside that, that uh, I've got it wrong. It's actually sometimes people do go down strange little side turnings. And Christianity is not an exact science. It's a relationship. And I don't think you or I could ever say that any relationship we have ever known with our children, with the dog, <laughs> with, oh, don't. with yeah. anybody, mm. we, we have never known it to be an exact science. And actually, as always, a danger is that, that people do tend, and I know the feeling, tend to vote with their feet mm. and go to the place where they actually want to be. So... I mean, one of the effects of that that is a bit of a hobby horse of mine is that some of the the terms, things we say, common sort of stuff we say in Christian narrative, have got diluted or or even disgraced in the way they've been presented. So, for instance, I remember on a radio interview someone saying, "You're not one of them born again Christians, are you?" And me saying, "Well, what's the other sort then?" And him saying, "Well, I just thought." And I said, "What you really mean is." Am I an insensitive, bigoted git? Mm. And he said, well, yeah, I suppose I do mean mm. that, really. And the, the actually, the very name of Jesus has acquired a kind of toxic flavour when it's spoken. Not everywhere, mm. not with everyone. Mm. But I don't, don't really know why that is, except perhaps it's something to do with the way it's been expressed or mm. the context in which mm. it's used sometimes. Don't know. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> I mean, take going right back to the Olympics just for a moment. Um, I mean, I'm an armchair expert on all these sports that I know nothing about because I haven't trained for years and years and understand every single movement. And the, you said about very difficult to put into words the relationship that we have with Jesus. And you said it's not an exact science. Well, obviously, by the time they get these sports to the Olympics, it is a pretty exact science, but it still goes wrong. Yeah, and the other yeah. thing is that, that that came out of learning and something becoming muscle memory and becoming mm. part it's of It's a them. reality. It's yeah. a reality and yeah. it's a hard yeah. won reality. Yeah. And so in, in the same way, maybe the reason people enjoy being an armchair expert on things they don't really understand is because it is a very comfortable place to be. It's a very comfortable place for me to watch the diving. Yeah. I don't have to be up there at five o'clock in the morning, every morning. Never did to go to a swimming pool and dive into cold water You've again. You've wanted to, haven't you? <laughs> I don't think I have really. No. But I think, um, yeah, I mean, I think I can relate to the whole idea of feeling a bit expert. Um, uh, without really understanding the cost of being involved in something. Uh, when I first became a Christian, and uh, some people will know I became a Christian after meeting you, and uh, um, and it was a very big thing in my life, and it was huge in yours. Mm. 
And uh, we ended up at a place called Burswood, didn't we, which is a Christian home of healing, which would be started Kent, by uh, somebody called Dorothy Kerrin, who had had some quite remarkable things happen in her life and tremendous healing. And it was a home of healing, wasn't it? Mm. And it was so different from the sort of lively, evangelical, bright sort of church that you'd introduced me to, mm. which had all the answers. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I remember learning from you quite a lot about the rapture and how important it was to get things right because you never knew when it was going. It was all very dynamic and, yeah, and sort yeah, of exciting. Yeah. And when we went to Burswood, if you remember, mm -hmm. they said the one rule that we have mm. is that we don't talk about religion. And do you remember you and I thought, what rubbish? Of course, we'll talk about it. We want to talk about it. It's what we do. It was quite a good the fundamental lesson, though, wasn't it, really? It was a huge lesson. Mm. Um, after we'd been grumbling about it, do you remember two young women came uh, just for a very short time, about a week, who did talk about it and caused such disruption in mm. this atmosphere because there were people from all different walks of Christianity. Mm. There were nuns, there were very high church believers, there were meditative people, there were some quite disturbed people, there was us. Um, I don't know where we fitted into all that, but, but and this insistence that we talked about it. Mm. And they were young and they were emphatic and they were clear cut and sure. Mm. And we saw with our own eyes, didn't we, how sometimes a yes, little knowledge be, is a truly be very dangerous destructive. thing. Um, I mean, ironically, of course, having learned that it's not a good thing to talk about it all the time, we talk <laughs> about it all the time. But I think one of the things that has changed mm -hmm. is that we we do actually know there are times for silence and for speaking and for not all those things. So it's I, it's not quite as simple. And I hope, as Adrian, actually. we have learnt a little bit. And I know a lot of people we know have learnt more than us about listening to people and hearing where they're coming from and realising there isn't one way. Um, in well, terms I, I of, think of sitting back has become a, a bit of a habit, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, and... It, we we do try not to use the cliches and the Christianese if we can help. Christianese is a description of the language within the subculture. By the way, um, we know very little, but what but what we do know can burn in us. I, I know that, mm. and I mm. also know, and we've already said it, it is quite definitely not a crutch. Mm. And mm. there are continual and. Ah, fundamental challenges. I mean, now as well, I won't go into that. And they're always pointing, as far as I can see, ultimately to no man's land, which is the bit where times things are difficult and mm. you don't know which side you're on. And it's not a bad place to be. Mm. Not a bad mm. place to be. Mm. Yes. Yes, I suppose that's true, really, that... I mean, I'm not any longer going to try and connect this with the Olympics because I don't think they do want to be in no man's land. I think when they do some massive jump, they want to land on two feet after going over the vault yeah, course, or they yeah. want to land within yeah, the square not, yeah, if the, it's the floor exercise. The metaphor but I like do our sounding know... in the shallows does begin to weep. <laughs> no, point, but yes. I do know that there are moments in their faces of these athletes of unbelievable disappointment, not just because they didn't get a medal, mm. but because they didn't quite manage it. And I think that if we can understand that for many people trying to follow Jesus, there are innumerable moments when you think, I thought I could do that and mm. I didn't quite manage it. And I let myself down a little bit. Mm. But they always say, don't they? We're going to go back, and we're going to we're going to work on it. We're going to we're going we're not going to give up. I don't think I've ever heard one of them saying, "Well, that's it. No, I've um, no. I've fallen flat on my face." No, I was just remembering as you said that what Ian Forster said about athletes, and he said the the of he said Forster always said obviously because <laughs> he thought it was obvious, but the reason people run as fast as they can run and throw as fast as they can throw as far as they can throw is in order to be and I think that central desire within faith is the same is to be mm. is to be is to be authentically mm. who you are mm. um, and 
I wouldn't dismiss any other activity as leading you in that direction. But um, yeah, I'll tell you one thing that really <laughs> interested me. We love the athletics, don't we? The we do floor, the gymnastics. And the gymnastics Gym oh, yeah. absolutely love it. Love Not it. able to do any floor single one exercises. of those things. What are the other ones? The... Oh, well, there's the beam and there's the parallel bars and yeah, there's the all rings those. and uh, such That's strength. Right. And, well, one uh, of them is called the rings. And what happens yeah. with the rings is that an incredibly muscular young man will hoist himself up onto these two rings and do the most amazing acts of suspension in apparently in mid-air by yeah. simply using muscular power to stay there to stay there and the other day when one of the um these fellows was in the middle of it the commentator said um as far as i can recall he said and the british athlete was on the rings said and here he goes moving smoothly and helplessly into the crucifixion and i thought <laughs> I thought, I mean, I understood what he was saying, and but at the centre of our our faith is what I thought. There's this other crucifixion, mm. um, and it's obviously named after that. That and it looks like and looked like a, a, an extraordinarily vivid failure. And mm. at some point, this voice cried out my crutch my crutch why have you forsaken me yeah something that supported him it wasn't smooth it wasn't effortless mm. it actually wasn't a crutch at all oh. and it still isn't mm. it still isn't and if you ask me to define what it is i don't know <laughs> i don't know i think it's something to do with wanting to be mm. i think mm something like that mm. well it's a good thing we're not armchair experts on that really yeah. because we'll never fully understand the mysteries of these things but it's mmm. a good place to be yeah yeah so, we'd love to hear from you I, I think the Olympics throws up so many thoughts don't you and so many oh yeah I know there must uh, be lots of so things many people, ideas that you think say, of yeah. and uh, so we'd love to hear from you. Okay, we'll, speak we'll to you see next you next week. week. Bye bye. bye, -bye.